call him for my fall. A young don't pay for you, me die by thunder and fire in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, put your mouth and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, In Jesus' name we pray. Pray this with aggression and fire. Curses issued against the labor of my hands. Expand in the name of Jesus. Any curse issued against the labor of my heart expire in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, then we pray. Curses on my father's hands. Curses on my mother's hands. Seeking for my hand. Can I hear you shouting that loud? Jesus Bakatenda <laughs> Yes, Belly. in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, Owners of deep problems. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Basapeti la kaya boshendera ba. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord God, Jesus, la guadura. Angels of deliverance. Yes, yes, yes. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. name we pray say strange enemies strange battles 
Strange problems. Can you shout those three things? Is that the loudest you can shout yeah, that? Damn! In the name of Jesus. Today is a day of deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Powers! That has swallowed my future. Don't think they are John Lamibi. Vami them by fire. In the name of Jesus. Commandant of Vami Dad. Jesus name we pray. Lord who called Jesus like Badura. Pragma! Akuria Lagara! Stealing my destiny! Tontia your mommy! Can you shout this loud? He's got a low rara! In the name of Jesus! Lord who called Jesus! Thank you, Jesus. Enough is enough. Bakapote se tende ke yaboshe se rabata. Balike tende rio. Loko tende ke tende ke yaboshe te rabata. Opuda mat, opuda mat, opuda mat. Open them out, open them out, open them out. Bakate setia. Danika tendera bo shendera bo kopola bakatandara bo santa. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, who called Jesus? Like Badura. Any infirmity I lera kai lera assigned to silence my destiny. Ti won ran pe ko pa yan mo mi lenu mo. Can you shout it with eight red? E fi gbere pelu ikorira. Make your voice louder than that. Oh so ke ju ba yan lo. Make it even louder than that. Oh so ke gidi gidi. In the name of Jesus. Uh 
My destiny shall not be silenced. Jesus name we pray. Lord who called Jesus. Pass! Agora! Assigned to trade my destiny for rituals. This is a serious prayer, beloved. I want you to pray without any apology. Pass! Agora! Assigned to trade my destiny. For rituals. What are you waiting for? Kill and do Death. Death. In the name of Lord Jesus. Jesus. Masechi la katende yaba. Somebody is breaking through right. Bapoli katende ke yabo shende yaba. Yes. 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 In Jesus name we pray. Lord who called Jesus, la gadura. Pass. Agara assigned to torment me with charms. Ti won na pe ko fi ogun da mi loro. Can you shout it? Die with your chance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say it. I know that go with me. Yes. Belly. Yes. Belly. My pa. La kate. Mi karibo so pande ke ya mo shende raba. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, who called Jesus, like by the rock. Pass! Consulting the grave against me. What are you waiting for? Death. In the name of Lord Jesus. Jesus. Open that mouth. Open that mouth. Yes, Benny. Don't negotiate. I do not do that. Everybody say this loud. Any animal. Any animal. Eroko, eroko, crying in the midnight. 
Tonke logan yoru to terminate my life. Lati le be mi mi cry to death. Keku in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray against them. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Any mouth leaking charm or magic to cast my star. That if you are woman, sisters, and you will come here shouting this. Mm -hmm. Let me hear the students are shouting that prayer. Let me hear the brothers roaring like thunder. Yes. Catch fire! In the name of Jesus. Set the mouth ablaze. Aha! 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 Jesus! 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 Run mad and die in the name of Jesus. Yes, see, see what's going on. Open that mouth, open that mouth, open that mouth. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Pass! Pain wish doctor to steal my glory. Can you say it again? Ramadan day in the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus. 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 Jesus name we pray. This next prayer is three one. Make you know your calling. Powers. Agara. Assigned to attack me with problems that have no solution. Tiwano, beko fi shoro ti oloju tu kolu me. Can you say it with anger? Ekigwele kwelu dinu. Say it with a loud voice. What are you waiting for? In the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, in 
Jesus name we pray. Lord who call Jesus. Said any demonic power hiding in any organ of my body. Can you shout this loud? Shout it with a loud voice. Dead. In the name of Jesus. 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 Deal with it. Deal with it. Go good to go good to you. Deal with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord who called Jesus. Enemies and there are enemies. Enemies ring in wickedness. Enemies rage. The range in the aggression. Your greatest enemy is any power, force, principality, gathering, association that does not want you to fulfill your destiny. That is your greatest enemy. The issue of destiny is a very serious matter. Everyone is interested in it. The devil too is interested in it. Once you have missed your destiny, the enemy has a right to cage you, to enslave you, and to embarrass you. Because no matter how a stone lives in water, the stone cannot become a fish. The destiny of a stone is not to become a fish. The issue of destiny is what the enemy targets right from the womb. It's from the womb. It begins to target it. Once it derails you in that journey, then all your shout of superiority over the devil is a lie. This is a very serious matter. Once it derails a man from that destiny, it doesn't mind giving you money. It doesn't mind giving you comfort. And you may be rejoicing that all is well. But it's not that no, it is a deeper wickedness to ensure that you never find a way to that destiny. The enemy may relocate you from your place of destiny, but then give you temporary comfort where he has relocated you to. So because you are enjoying that comfort, you will think it's the land of blessing. Whereas, he has just located you. And once the enemy has made a man to miss the destiny, their agenda for that life is complete. Because they know surely well that there is nothing like success when you are operating outside your destiny. And let me make you understand that success is not possession of money. No. The people we are reading about in our history book that changed the world, that brought something to the world, they were not, it's not money that they use. They use their potentials. Many rich people have died and their names disappear from history. But there was a man who came to this country who was not interested in money. He wanted to understand the origin of Ribanaja. Came all the way from his country. His name was Mongo Park. All the rich people that have died, died, died many years ago. Nobody knows who they are. But here was a man who came. His name is in the history book. The names of the others are nowhere to be found. They had money. But when they, are, they finished, their money died, their destiny died, everything died, legacy died. This is because of the importance of that destiny. A lot of things could happen to it. A destiny could be paralyzed. A destiny could be silenced. A destiny could be killed. A destiny could be wasted. A destiny could be demoted. A destiny could be hanged. A destiny could be banged in the warehouse of the enemy. A destiny could be caused to stammer instead of speaking clearly. A destiny could be buried. 
a destiny could be suffocated. A destiny could be suppressed. A destiny could be punctured. A destiny could be shot the way they shoot human beings with bullets. A destiny could be downgraded. A destiny could be trampled upon. Which is why now we have to listen carefully to what we are talking about tonight. 40 instructions to power your destiny. You want to empower your destiny? You want to power it? 40 instructions. I will go through the instructions one by one. If you can just try, try. You can only do half of what will be said here today. You will have done your destiny a world of favor. Already, many of us were born into deficit. Deficit. Unfortunately, you and I have no control about who is going to be our father, our mother, and where we are going to be born. A person by destiny was supposed to be a pilot, but then he was born by a native doctor who decided to teach him incantation so he can take over from him when he's dead. Look at it now. A man is designed by destiny to be a pilot. But his father, who is a witch doctor, had another idea. He decided to initiate him into the witchcraft of witch doctors. So, he has taken him away from his pilot destiny. And he directed his destiny somewhere else. So, already, that fellow has been born in the deficit. By destiny, a person is supposed to be a university professor. But unfortunately now, You'll be born to a family where they have no money to even send you anywhere. And so they ask you to go and learn how to sow. Because they have no money to finance you. So already you have been born into that deficit. Now going away from that foundational deficit into the pattern of destiny is very hard praying. Hard praying. Not normal prayer. Hard prayer to find a way back. Remember that man of God I told you about? He got to primary one at the age of 17. 17. It was when he got born again and he saw his destiny. And he knew there was no way he would achieve that destiny without going to school. He went right back. I'm praying for somebody here today. If you have missed your journey of destiny, Go back there in the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Romans 15, 4. Says this. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, time were written for our learning. That we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That is, this Bible, everything was written for our learning. Those things that happened there, they wrote them for our learning. So that when you look at it, you saw what somebody did and he missed his destiny. You saw what somebody did and everyone got angry. You now be careful not to repeat. That is why those things were written. Number one, instructions. 40 instructions to power your destiny. Number one, always educate yourself. And correct yourself from the errors of others. Always educate yourself and correct yourself from the errors of others. When you saw that somebody has made a mistake, you don't just follow what he has done. There's a proverb in Yoruba language. Say, he who sinks in a hole is taught the followers what to do. 
when you is walking and you find him inside the pit, of course you will stop. Because you don't want to jump into the same pit. That is instruction number one. Educate and correct yourself from the errors of others. Your foolish father married ten wives. And you saw the way they scattered his life before he died. Now, you, you, you. They're already looking for number two. Number three. Better educate yourself and correct yourself from the error of others. So that you don't follow the history of your father's house. You don't follow the iniquity of your father's house. Your father that was already in poverty now increased his own poverty by multiplying wives that he cannot even feed. And you yourself know that some of those wives were sleeping around because he could not finance them. It is now that you are starting the same journey. May the Lord have mercy on you. Two, don't allow what you cannot do to stop what you can do. Don't allow what you cannot do to stop what you can do. Don't say, well, because I am not that educated. I can't do this. Don't say, because I can't see very well. I can't do this. The man who discovered the bulb we are lighting now was almost a deaf man. But he did not allow that disability to stop him. Three. Know thyself thoroughly. Know yourself thoroughly. It is important to pray. Father, where am I? Father, show me the secrets of my life. Father, where should I throw my net in the ocean of life? Father, what am I supposed to be doing here? Know thyself. And the earlier you know yourself, the better. If you pray to that level and God brings a picture of who you are supposed to be, you either break down and cry, or people will break down and actually cry. And some will quickly readjust their lives. Quickly, they will readjust. If God tells you that you are supposed to be an environmental transformer, you are supposed to be an employer of labor. And that is how you are going to prosper. Now you now discover that now, it's like you are a housemaid. Then you will know that you are not in your place of destiny. You need to pray to go back to your place of destiny. I am praying for anyone here. Let your amen be sevenfold and be very violent and wicked. Every arrow fired into your destiny. I command the arrows to backfire in the name of Jesus. Instruction number four. Anger is like fire. It is dangerous when it goes out of control. Anger is like fire. It is dangerous when it's allowed to get out of control. Anger does more havoc to the person who is exhibiting it than the person you are directing it to. If anger is still in your life, you doesn't get angry. Anger is still in your life. The problem is more than all the witches and wizards in Nigeria put together. If you can still identify yourself as somebody who gets angry and anger can become a little bit uncontrollable, then you need to change your ways. Five, worry is a parasite. It wears our lives away. Worry keeps you very, very busy. But it gives you no progress. Worry is like you are sitting in a rocking chair. The chair is rocking but you are not making progress. The Bible says, Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Worry is a parasite. 
that wears our life away. No man has ever made an inch of progress by worrying. Everyone who is given to worry, 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 anxiety. What you are doing to your destiny is to keep it stagnant. Be careful for nothing. Jesus now said it very seriously. Say which of you, by getting worried, can change even one strand of hair on your head? Indeed. You can't even add anything to your life by worry. So it's something you must stop. It may be why your destiny is not moving. Because once worry gets in, faith jumps out. And so once faith jumps out, there is nothing everyone can do for you. Because without faith, it's impossible to please it. Six, your attitude determines how far you go. Your attitude determines how far you go. Listen, as it is within, that is how it is without attitude. The same thing will happen to two different people. Some may scatter completely and not recover themselves, but others will sit down, recover, adjust themselves. So attitude determines how far you go. Seven, change is not your enemy. Change for good is actually your friend. Eight. Your character and not your achievement will determine your true value. Your character and not your achievement will determine your true value. Your character is what you are in the dark. When nobody can see you, that is your true character. If that character is bad, no matter how talented you are, you will not get far. Rather, you will find people of lower potential. People who are less talented than you, being promoted to be your boss. Because you are talented, but you have no character. So you lose out. Now, your choices today determines your tomorrow. Every day we are making our choice. Those little, little choices we make, they are the ones that act together and become big choices. You are here tonight by choice. You choose to be here. You could choose to be somewhere else. Coming to church is a choice. Praying is a choice. Happiness is a choice. You can decide to be happy, you can decide to be sad. So your choices today is what determines your tomorrow. Those friends you chose in those days can say how far they have led you now. I'm praying for somebody here. Any satanic choice that you had made, I nullify it by the blood of Jesus. Third, you must be a person of compassion. A man or woman of compassion. Because kindness will influence people more than talking or eloquence. There are some husbands that lack compassion. There are some families that lack compassion. They lack compassion. I remember that case. A woman had just had a baby. Her in-laws came to the house to see the baby to greet her. Do you know, this woman who's just had a baby, they ordered her to go and be pounding yam. It was by the pounding yam she collapsed and died. <laughs> so those healers, no compassion. They were compassionate, one of them should pound the yam if they wanted to eat, pound the yam. That's what the Bible says, don't let mercy and compassion depart from you. Eleven, this is a serious instruction to power any destiny. 11. One day we will all depart from this life with nothing. One day we will all depart from this life with nothing. So this is your hanging on to. 
It's me, it's mine, it's me, it's mine. I want, I want, I want, I want. And so you are fighting and struggling and fighting and fighting. And one day, you put it to your hand, you drop it. The Bible says, we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain that we are going to take nothing out of it. So those who are stealing money, stealing government money, stealing people's money, do all kinds of things. You brought nothing into this world. It is certain that you are going to take nothing out of it. Those jewelries, the handier, the is the handier. Brought nothing, you take nothing there. I went to the work keeping for a sister many years ago, for the mother of a sister many years ago. And I noticed her mother, her mother who died after her seven husbands. I noticed she. In the coffin, she painted her lips. She did her hair, did the hair very well. Put eyelash, put everything, put chain, put everything. And I looked. Why are you wasting your time doing all this? If she dresses like this and appears at the gate of heaven, I say, "Fine, mama, fine, mama, enter." I said, "No, let me officially tell you: this is your mother in this coffin." Has gone to hellfire. Those things, the end the air. Try. Be a person of determination. Have a rugged determination to succeed. Be a person of determination. I mean, stick to something until it is achieved. Simply because you have difficulty doesn't mean you run away. Be a person of determination. 13. The world belongs to dreamers. You must have your own dream that will inspire you to go on. It was the dream of Joseph that inspired Joseph to go on. The only problem Joseph had, he talked too much. So it's his mouth that put him in trouble. But his dream kept him on. The world belongs to dreamers. So, you must have a dream that will inspire you to go on. 14. We preach a better sermon with our lives than our lips. You will preach a better sermon with your life than your lips. The way you live your life is a better sermon than what you are saying in your mouth. 15. Strive for excellence. In whatsoever you do, strive for excellence. In whatsoever you do, don't be somebody who just wants to be mediocre. You want to strive for excellence. That is, you want to follow the biblical injunction, which says, "Whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it well to the glory of God." And anybody who can do anything, and you can do it well, people will come and look for you, even if you are in the remotest corner. If you can do something, you can do it well, you can do it better than every other person, no matter where you are, geographically, people will come there and look for you. So, this is a very, very serious situation. Try for excellence. Anything you are meant to do, do it well. You are supposed to sweep, sweep it well. You are supposed to clean, clean it well. Do it very well. Saul had disobeyed God. Saul had obtained kingship on a platter of gold. He didn't struggle, he didn't sweat for it. Saul did not take it serious. Saul now disobeyed God. And God sent a demonic spirit to start trouble his life. Meaning that he was like a mad king on the throne. The people in the palace were worried. A king is misbehaving. The king is demon possessed. So they held a meeting to decide what to do to get the king out of the trouble. They took all kinds of decisions and yet they didn't get results until they decided to look for somebody who can play an instrument very well. But then the fan did it. Right there where you are. 
Close your eyes now. Say, oh God, arise. Unless a voice for me. I have no voice. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree that one. Oh God, arise. Unless a voice for me where I have no voice. Amen. Rise to your feet now. If you are in this garden tonight, you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus, do so very quickly now. By saying what I'm going to say after. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from now, I say bye-bye to the devil. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody will pray these destiny-changing prayers. There are prayers and there are prayers. And there are prayers that will change destinies. Can you shout this loud and clear? We mention your name and let your voice be the loudest here. Daniel Olukoye! Arise and shine in the name of Jesus. Arise and shine in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Great Physician. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Heal my destiny in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to pray one prayer now. And your amen should be 21 fold amen. By the time you get to number 11 amen, all of a sudden, the wind of the Holy Ghost will come down and begin to blow away what should be blown away. I decree upon your life now that any power that has influenced your destiny from the womb shall Die in the name of Jesus. Jesus. As far as the wind of the Holy Ghost, the wind is blowing. The wind of the Holy Ghost. Makatenda ya boshendera bokopola bakancha. Aha. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Stretch your right hand towards this altar here now. Father, let his hands become the battle cry of Jehovah. Let his hands become the hands of fire and power. Let his hands pull down the stronghold of every infamity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have any infirmity in any part of your body, smite it 21 times and command them to go back to the senders. Let's go.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Shout this loud and clear. Thou power of destiny robbers. You are a lord. Thou. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. While we take a look at the prophetic picture of this year, and I'm going to say my words very slowly so you can understand and get the points and understand the kind of year that we just entered into. Anytime you see figure 23 in the Bible, in biblical arithmetic, it conveys the idea of death and resurrection. That's why I'm praying for all of you gathered here today. That any power that needs to die for you to fulfill your destiny shall die in the name of Jesus. And anything that needs to resurrect for you to fulfill your destiny shall resurrect in the name of Jesus. The prophetic picture of the year. The most critical issue of this year is threefold. Number one, what does God want to do this year? Number two, what does the power of darkness want to do? Number three, what does God want his people to do? Those are the three critical issues. What does God want to do? What does the power of darkness want to do? What does God want his people to do? Number one, this year is a year to wage very serious war against the spirit of procrastination. Procrastination. In the valley of procrastination, a lot of people will run into trouble. That's the first thing about the year. All those good things you have been planning to do, don't procrastinate. Two, it's a year. Like I told you before we enter into the year, when the flesh must be mortified if you want to avoid trouble. Three, it's going to be a year of recovery and turnaround for many people. A year of recovery and turn around restoration to so many people. Four. It's going to be a year when God will humble the proud. Those who think they have it all sorted out, nothing can remove or change them, they'll be surprised. A year that God will 
humble the proud. Five. He said, Yeah, where prayer, serious prayers against violent revolutions and overthrows are required. You need serious prayers for that. Against violent revolutions and overthrows. Six. It's a year of strange war. War. War for your attention. The enemy will try to distract you. Avoid distractions this year. It's mental war. Emotional war. Health war. Spiritual war. And also physical war. The enemy will try to attack in every manner. I'm praying for all of us gathered here. That the best attempt of your enemies shall end in painful failure for them. In the name of Jesus. Seven. We need to pray against strange attacks from the waters. I said, there's an evil rumbling in the marine world. We need to pray against it. Eight. We need serious prayers against the spirit of lack and famine. Nine. This will be a year of divine judgment on wicked and corrupt leaders and collaborators. Ten. God will break his silence this year to deal with evil and wickedness. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11 Ecclesiastes 8 11 says this because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil God may have been silent on some evil and wickedness going on because he's waiting for people to repent or to change and God may seem to ignore what is going on but you will break such silence this year 11 a lot of uncompleted destiny projects will be completed this year 12 this is a Psalm 23 year is Psalm 23 year. A year that those who rely on God will boast in their God. Thirteen. It's a year believers should pray and break embargoes and dismantle evil monopolies. Believers should pray it. 14. It's a year of disgrace for fake, hypocritical, and powerless religions. 
15. He said, Yeah, the Lord will dismantle mighty men who dare to stand in the way of God. And 16. The Lord will fight like a mighty, terrible one to deliver his children. And I'm praying that the Lord will arise as a mighty, terrible one to fight for you in the name of Jesus. Let that amen rule like thunder. 17. And this is for the, this is particularly for the young ones. It's a year where it's extremely dangerous for the sheep to stray away from the shepherd and for you to dis discard good advice. Eighteen. It's a year of judgment for those who convert the altars of prayers to dens of thieves. Those who are doing all kinds of things, selling anointing oil, selling anchor ships, merchandising the things of God. It's a year of judgment for them. 19. A year of judgment for those who wickedly take innocent blood. Mark those words. 20. It's a year of correction, confrontation, and change for those who want to move forward. 21. A year of joy. Just like last year. For couples waiting on the Lord for babies. 22. It's a year of regret and judgment. For ritual killers and their activities shall backfire. Twenty-three. It's a year of tragedy for youths who refuse to exhibit sexual control. For the enemy will organize those who are not humans who will come up as humans and if you mix with them there is no prayer that can help you let me say that again the young people should not think that everybody they see around they are humans like us those ones who say in parties and things and I don't ever think that you're, you're, everybody is a human being no <laughs> so if you go and join yourself with any of those strange people you're finished just terminate your destiny like that a word is enough for the wise 24 a year where testimonies will drive much of the next move of God. So this is not a year to be covering your testimony. You must share them. The Bible said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. 25 it's a year to form the habit of seeking and receiving help from heaven. Two books in the Bible. They are essential for this year. 
Take time. Study these two books very well. One is Psalm 23, I already mentioned to you. The other one is Isaiah. I'll get back to that later. These books are essential for you for this year. You see, the 23rd book of the Bible is Isaiah. Isaiah is a messianic prophet. When you read the book of Isaiah, you see the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ clearly preached. It is in Isaiah you find for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. It is this book you see it was despised and rejected of men. It's in the book of Isaiah you find himself bore our infirmities and took away our sicknesses. It's in the book of Isaiah you find all we like sheep have gone astray. Isaiah is a book within a book. It's a book to study seriously this year. There are 66 books in Isaiah. Isaiah is like a mini Bible. Because there are 66 chapters in the Bible too. Isaiah is like St. Paul of the Old Testament, of the New Testament. It's St. Paul. The only Old Testament book that predicts the virgin birth of Jesus and his dual nature is still the same Isaiah. The Old Testament book most quoted in the New Testament is still the same Isaiah. The second most quoted book is the Psalm. So this year, beloved, is number 26. Is Psalm 23 year for those standing for God. Twenty-seven. A year we must seriously pray that the mercy of God will push back the judgment stretched out against our world by heaven. In this season, man has done so much to upset heaven. 28. We must pray against the miscarriage of God's will in this season. And 29, like I told you, it's a year to key into the book of Isaiah. And finally, for those who are 100% obedient to God, it's a year of comfort and glory. Let me now tell you the strategies for success in a year like this. This year, we want maximum success this year. One, always be sincere and authentic before God. Be sincere before God. Be authentic before God. Number two, become a prayer addict. If you prayed in 2022, you should multiply that of this year by seven. Three, be involved.
involved in praise revival. Make it a habit to spend quality time praising God. Four, be quick to forgive. Don't keep any malice. Five, be teachable. Be teachable. Don't be the kind of person who comes to church and you pick and choose what you want to do. You pick which part of the message you want, you pick which one you want to do, you pick which one you don't want to do. Six, be a giver. Not only in material ways, but also spiritual ways. Seven, guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart with all diligence. Eight, believers need this particular year the cover of the blood of Jesus. That blood of Jesus prayer it should be a regular prayer point for this year. Now, like I said before we enter into the year, pray for the grace to die to the flesh daily. So that you can avoid all the attacks of the enemy. And you can live eternally with God. And finally, number 10. Pray that God ransoms you. From the power of the grave and of death. Make that your regular prayer. It several hot times. Get thee behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus. Can you say it several aggressive times? Thank you, Jesus. Say any dream assigned to divert my blessings. Can you shout this loud? Be arrested by fire in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. As I pray this prayer, that person in this meeting, that the doctors have told you that there is nothing you can do about your situation, immediately the process of this prayer starts. You may not be able to find yourself on your feet anymore. But then, right there where you are, the surgery of heaven will happen in your life. And you'll be instantly delivered. <laughs> also, those who are here with bone, bone problems, as I pray this prayer, the power of God will fall upon you. <laughs> and a reconstruction will start in your body. <laughs> as I pray this prayer, those who have been hearing strange voices, the strange voices shall be silenced. <laughs> and then plantations of darkness in the body will begin to jump out. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you are the great God in the eyes. Thank you for your power, which is the greatest power. Thank you for your anointing, which breaketh you. Right here, this afternoon, Lord. Your word says, Though we walk in the flesh, not walk after the flesh. The purpose of our warfare are not coming, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Casting down every imagination and every eye thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. Every stronghold here today, now within or without, the name which is above all this, Jesus Christ, I pull you down in the name of Jesus. Any yoke upon any life here, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let the yoke be broken. Let it be broken, 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 all the power of God in the name of Jesus, let it be broken, in the name of Jesus. Let the power of deliverance fall upon the people who are gathered here. You, the power of oppression, loose your hold, loose your hold, loose your hold. In the name of Jesus, as many people as are here now, and there are powers trying to frustrate you. Let the power behind that frustration be arrested now. Be arrested. 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 In the name of Jesus. Aha! The powers that have been pouring invisible sand on the body of this person. That person right there where you are. The power of God is coming upon you. And that yoke is broken completely. Aha! Anyone here today? You are going through circular problem. As one problem is going, another one is coming. I am going to count seven from here. At my count of seven, the God will fall upon you, and that yoke will be disgraced. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right. Yes, the yoke of circular problem is broken, is broken. As many people as are here this morning, and your name is with a witch doctor, your children's name are with a witch doctor, and they are divining against them. Are you there where you are? Receive power to pursue the pursuit. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That is a growth in somebody's body. Lay your hands upon that place now. And begin to press it. To press it. And shrink. And shrink. I'm waiting for that person. Press it. That's right. That sister over there. The trinity of witchcraft. That says that your wedding bell will not ring. Has been buried alive now. There's the power of God coming up on Aha. I have to work for somebody here. I don't know who the person is. The Lord said, I should tell you that your reproach will become a testimony. That's right. 
Now get ready to pray. Pray like a man or woman from another world. Messenger of sorrow. Carry your Lord. In the name of Jesus. Them to carry their load. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout this loud again without any apology. The powers assigned to turn my life upside down. In the name of Jesus. Something is happening over there. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Remain standing on your feet with your eyes closed. Eyes closed. With your eyes closed. There is a woman here. Unfortunately, you are suffering from parental witchcraft. This is very sad, but they have turned you completely upside down. They have stolen from you, stolen from your children. Right there where you are, there are certain things that are programmed into your body. But as an angel of God by your side, taking this material soul. Let that be silent. Please don't say anything. One is in the center of the head, it's coming out now. The other one is in the center of the chest, it's coming out too. We're not here to play, we're here for serious business. There is one in the womb. It's coming out you. There's one man over there. You are supposed to be extremely rich. But that wish should make you rich was captured in your life 17 years ago. That man, you know yourself. You've tasted money before, but there's no money now. Right there where you are, that man. Smite your own head. Three times. Three. One, two, three. And be silent. As an electric current of the Holy Spirit passing through your body now. Of the head. This is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are ready. You are ready. For this seven prayers. While raising up your two hands to the Lord, pick any song of praises in your mouth and sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who has brought you here to give you testimonies. Masekaya Boshentera Basanta. How great is this name? How great is this name? For that of this sin, we will not be all times of the mighty red sea. 
I'm so the never knew If you trust in me I'm a cat in the abyssin terrible The petty alicadi carabo santa seven prayers. But within those few minutes, you shall have testimonies. So, oh God, Allah, waste my wasters. Can you shout it loud? In the name of Jesus. Come on, you wasters to be wasted. Something is happening here this morning. Yes. name we pray. That's good. Increase your fire. Say, my soul in joy. Come back my fire. In the name of Jesus. Collect it back. Collect it back. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Yes. Aha! In Jesus' name we pray. Say, my father, my father, my father. Shout his love. Disappoint my enemies in the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. This is number four. Look at what is happening. That's right. The witchcraft urine on the head of that fellow and inside your business ground has been cleared away by the power of God. So powers working against my laughter. Yeah! In the 
name of Jesus. Yes. Open your mouth, open your mouth. This is not a day to negotiate. Let your voice be loud. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. This is number five. This is number five. Aha. Powers! Waiting to see my obituary. Can you shout it with only a thread? Your voice is not loud enough. Your voice is still not loud enough. Damn! In the name of Jesus. 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 That's how to say it. That's how to say it. That's how to say it. Papata Katele Kaya Boshandarama. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Two more. Two more. There are ten sisters here. There is a demonic stone in your abdomen. And anytime they speak onto those stones, you become sick. Those ten sisters, right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. And that stone is coming out. That's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and that's number ten. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you shout this with boiling anger? Which crown powers of my father's are? Which crown powers of my Yes. Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Number seven now. <laughs> yes. This is wonderful. I've seen so many things that have been stolen away. Being brought back in a hurry. All the sisters who are here this afternoon. Can I hear you shout, Glory Killers! Is that the loudest you sisters can shout it? Brothers, let me hear you shout it! Everybody together now! You are a liar! Yeah! (laughs) 
Jesus name we pray as we open to psalm number 20 psalm number 20 we're going to read and pray from this psalm psalm number 20 everybody remain standing thank you Jesus are we ready let's go the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble the name of the God can you read the first verse again say so, oh God our Jesus name we pray with a loud voice say oh God our Lord defend your interest in my life in the name of Jesus The Lord heard in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 2, let's go. Send the help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Can you say, Oh God, arise? Send me help from above in the name of Jesus. Somebody is breaking through with these prayers. Jesus name we pray say where is the Lord God of Elijah strengthen me by fire in the name of Jesus somebody is breaking through in Jesus name we pray verse 3 let us go remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice shout this loud and clear oh God arise accept my sacrifice in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus so put your mouth and pray Jesus name we pray verse 4 let's go grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy cancer can you shout this louder than anyone around you oh God arise oh answer my prayers in the name Another person is breaking through with those prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 5. We will rejoice in the salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Oh God, arise! Answer your name in my life. In the name of Jesus. Come 
continue, continue, continue. Jesus' name we pray. Verse 6. Now I know that the Lord's Savior is anointed. We will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Verse 8. They are brought down and falling, but we are risen and stand upright. Save Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Shout this loud and clear. Every unrepentant enemy assigned against my life. I bring you down in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Stretch your right hand towards the altar here. Father, I bring this hands before you. Let your power, your fire, your glory. I'm tied to this answer in the name of Jesus. As you use this hand, your story shall change to glory. In the name of Jesus, lay that hand on your head now. With a voice that is above anyone close to you. And there are angels of God around there to just do this function alone. Shout this loud and clear. My head. Oh, Hear the word of the Lord. Arise and shout. In the name of Jesus. Them we pray. A servant for the man. Say thank you, Jesus. All eyes closed. If you are in this meeting tonight, and you can remember very clearly one of your father's wives issued a curse on you and you can see the manifestation of those curses even right now find a way to this altar be on your knees pray without any apology your, one of your father's wife actually issued a curse upon you and you can see the manifestation. Find a way to this altar. And pray the way you have never prayed before. Can you shout this loud and clear? Foundational warfare. Can you shout this loud? Fighting my destiny. Oh, my. Da. In the name of 
Jesus. Something is happening. on old can I hear somebody shouting it your voice is not loud enough catch fire in the name of Jesus You cannot afford to negotiate. This is not a day for negotiation. In Jesus' name we pray. This particular prayer, don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours. Even if you don't understand it, don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours. Angels of fire. Relocate me from ancient prison. Angels of fire. Relocate me from ancient prison in the name of Jesus. Yes. name we pray blood of Jesus push out every arrow of sickness in my body can I hear you shouting this blood let your voice be louder than that in the name Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are in this meeting today, you have a certificate, but the enemy has never allowed you. To use it to prosper in any way. Find a way to this altar. Be on your knees. Pray without any apology. Pray violently. And believe God for 24 hour breakthrough, 48 hours breakthrough, 72 hours breakthrough. Every shackle of witchcraft. Shackles. 
Jesus name we pray I want you to get angry in your spirit in this story changing prayer point we're going to pray next that want me to sow and not reap. Can I hear the sister shouting it? I want the sisters to get angry in their spirit. Let me hear the brothers roaring like thunder. Everybody shouting it loud. one hot times don't, don't reduce your volume Bartimaeus did not reduce his volume rather he kept increasing it 21 times you will shout what I'm going to shout now my story must change by the power in the blood Jesus. Let's go. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A seven for the man. Let's rise to our feet, please. I'd like you to turn to somebody. You will point at the person. And the person will point at you. You will pray for the person like this. The person will pray for you like this. Point at the person. Pray for the person the way you want the person to pray for you. Wicked powers. Sign to increase your disappointment. Yeah. 
the name of Jesus. Pray for your friend now. For another person, pray for that person like this. Let the person pray for you too. Powers moving you from battle to battle. Their time is up. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, bakatela kaya bo shende ribo kusotia, ribo sapira katende kaya bo shende rabalaba. Yes. Look for another person. Say, Oh God, decorate his life with glory in the name of Jesus. Pray for your friend now. Jesus name we pray thank you Jesus now time to pray for yourself time to pray for yourself where is the Lord God of Elijah Allah let my story change in the name of Jesus It's up, please, up, please, up, please, up, please, up, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Now make a vow before the Lord. What you are going to do when you begin to see that these things you've written in your paper that the stories have changed make a vow before the Lord what you will do makante lakaya bo shende rabo sandia nakante da lakaya bo shende rabo kosente thank you Jesus Amen. Amen. The Lord blesses you from Zion and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Every prayer request written there, let your power fall upon them. Do great, marvelous, mighty, and wondrous things using this prayer request. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord God that dwelleth in Zion we we'll move in the life of those who wrote this letter in a new way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Now bring out your manna water. And you will shout this loud and clear. By the power in the blood of Jesus, my story must change. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus.
Jesus name we pray say my water carry the fire of deliverance Jesus Jesus name we pray say every power stealing my glory your time is up in the name of Jesus begin to recover your glory In Jesus name we pray. This prayer is for those who want to move from where they are to where the Almighty wants them to be. Oh God arise. Lift me up by fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree it. Lift me up by fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> this prayer is for somebody here. If you pray it well, by the time we close this meeting, your testimony will start. Say so every chain. Time down my star. Pray in the name of Jesus. Command the chain time down your star to break. Pia li katara basanta. Ria polikasa. Every chain time down my star. Break, 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 break. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. And we praise your holy name for the manifestation of your glory and power. It is written, O thou that earnest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. We are gathered there. Visit us by your power. Lay your hands upon us. Move our destiny forward. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Tonight, we are looking at the God of impact. The God of manifestation. The God of promotion. The God of impact. The God of manifestation. The God of promotion. Sisters, what are we talking about tonight? And brothers, what are we talking about? In Deuteronomy chapter 28, I read verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13. Deuteronomy 28, 13 says this. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shall be above only and thou shall not be beneath if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God which I commanded this day to observe and to do them I read again and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shall be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. Clearly, two positions are identified. One is head, the other is tail. The fact that the Bible identifies those two positions, it means that both positions are available to be occupied. Although there is still a dangerous position between the head and the tail called average, but the Bible says 
the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above and not beneath. This is the word of God. And the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Not that it's about to settle. It's settled in heaven. In life, there are only seven categories of people. And you and I, as we are here tonight, we belong to one of those categories. Number one, those who never discover who they are. And if you are in this planet, you really do not know who you are. You really do not understand the kind of things God has deposited into your life. There are plenty of people in that category. Two, there are those who do not know what is happening. They are just in this planet. They have no clue what is going on. They are born. They go to nursery school. If there is one in their village. Then primary school, secondary school, university, get a degree if it's possible, get married, have children, die, bury, finish. They really don't know what's going on. They see human beings like sticks. They don't really know what human beings are. They have no clue about the mysteries of life. Neither do they have an idea about the law that keeps the universe in order. They are completely naive. They don't know anything. They may be academically sound, but spiritually in an entity. Three, they are those who watch things happening. They are basically spectators. They spectate. Instead of them to be a spectacle that people will come and watch, they are the spectators. I see somebody here tonight. People will soon gather at your results. In the name of Jesus, let our amen rule like thunder. They watch things happen. Four, there are those who make things happen. They make things happen. They make the news. Then number five, there are those who are successful. Successful. And they are Happy with what they are doing. Then six. They are the strugglers and the wrestlers. Always struggling. Always battling. Always addressing issues. As one problem is going, another one is coming. One year, they are battling the enemy. Second year, they are battling the They are always battling the enemy. So that even useful prayers for their lives, the enemy has not given them time to pray it. They operate at poverty level, average level. Number seven are those who are significant. That is, they have more than enough and they can impact others positively. God is a God of impact. And God wants us to make impact. Positive impact. Let me tell you one truth, beloved. It is impossible for you to encounter the living God and your life remains the same. The reason behind the cold spiritual life we see with so many people. The reason behind dying today, working tomorrow, spiritual life of so many people. Is because they've never had an encounter. When the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords manifest in your life, you encounter Him, your life will no longer remain the same. There are people who are very, very quiet people, easygoing people. But the day they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, their life just changed. Because they have to make the necessary impact. I'm praying for somebody here. That the impact that will promote your life and the life of those around you shall manifest in your life. In the name of Jesus. So God is a God of impact. No one encounters him and remains the same. No one gets across to his way and you say you are still the same. How can the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lord of the Universe, encounter a person and you say you don't know? You will know. And you will definitely know. Your life, like that popular choir song, will be rearranged. Will be rearranged. I pray for that rearrangement. 
Everyone in the Bible who made an impact were people that had the encounter. And this is a very serious matter. And I tell you something, beloved. Since God is a God of impact, we have to make impact. To make an impact is to make an impression on one thing or the other. It means for your life to give an effect that gives color. You can make a positive impact or a negative impact. An entrance of a person to a place can bring negative things. While somebody else gets there, positive things begin to happen. What God wants from us as individuals, our lives should live indelible positive mark on the lives of other people. Our lives must be a force to reckon with and not a mere figure. That's what we mean by making positive impact. Our lives must be a source of change, a source of turnaround, a source of transformation. Our lives must make notable impression upon people's hearts and minds. That's what we mean by making positive impact. Our lives must stand out. The Bible says, Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Making a positive impact means you must be, we must be men or women of distinction. We must be men and women who are good example unto others. I pray that you make a good impact. There used to be a man of God many years ago. He was a gynecologist. He was a deliverance minister, he was a pastor, he was a gynecologist. Any time this brother was on duty at the maternity ward in the hospital, when, he, when they see him enter with his white coat into the maternity ward where people are about to deliver babies, all the women will be clapping and they will be rejoicing. Because they know that that night that he is on duty, everybody must deliver normally. He will not do cesarean operation for anybody. He will pray and he will deliver the baby right there. So they love him. Anytime he was on duty, the woman will be clapping. Whereas there is another doctor. When he comes in, oh, oh. Because we just look at you. Say, Madam, stop shouting there. Why are you making noise? When you and your husband was doing exercise, was I there when you were doing the exercise? Why are you making noise there now? Stop disturbing my head. Ooh, 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 ooh. We say push, I'm not pushing. Just keep quiet there. If, if you shout again, I operate you. And his own patients were dying. But there was a brother. When he moves in, it makes positive impact. The Bible says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. To make impact is to have a beautiful feet. If you are a sister here, you are not married, and you are praying to get married, please pray to get the kind of husband whose spiritual life will be a challenge to your own life. Not the husband you will be begging, let us pray, let us go to church. My dear, don't drink this beer, it's too much, one bottle is enough. My dear, don't destroy yourself with all these drinks that you are drinking. My dear, stop going to the house of those who are selling paraga. Not that kind of first man. I pray that you be a man or woman of impact. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Romans chapter 8, verse 19 is one of those scriptures that will bother any true child of God. If you are a man of God, it will bother you. If a person wishing to grow spiritually, this scripture will bother you. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 19. He says this, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. What is this verse saying? He said that the whole world is waiting for you to manifest. That's what he said. So he's still waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. What I will say, God himself is a God of manifestation. What then is this passage saying? He's saying a lot of things are waiting until the time you manifest. It means the world 
is waiting for you to manifest. It means there are many things that will not get into shape until you manifest. It means there are people whose destinies are attached to your destinies and if you don't manifest, they do not manifest. It means that until you shine, many will not shine. Until you make progress, many will not make progress. It means until you manifest, some heads will never rise. That is, there is an expectation from you by this generation. An expectation that this generation is expecting from you. This is a serious matter. I could remember the church that I was many years back. The day the Lord said, son, get out of this place. Get out of this place. I have not committed the salvation of this church into your hand. Get out. I just returned from England with a PhD. And the Lord said, get out. So I got out. So now I'm out of our church, which is basically a cathedral. We had organs. We had choir robes. We have all kinds of things. Sometimes when we close the service, they distribute happy family biscuit. That biscuit that looks like stick and wood. So it's not too bad. But God said, get out. I said to where? I said to Makoko. And I went there. Makoko is a strange place. The headquarters of all kinds of spirits. We started in a shop. Shop that can take maybe 10, 12 people. People laughed at me. They made fun of me. Some would say, if you had read mathematics, you would have said you are mad. Can you leave a cathedral to come and be meeting in a shop? Then, in a place like Makoko, that time. And those of you who know about Makoko in those days, I don't know about now. There are two kinds of vehicles that transport people to Makoko, from Adekule bus stop there to Makoko. One is proper bus. One is what you call Oloye. Oloye means the vehicle has no windscreen, it has no glass. You pay about half price for that one. But all kinds of breeze will blow into your eyes and into your face as you are going. It was the headquarters of all kinds of occultic churches. You don't start preaching a message in Makoko in those days on the pulpit without first of all praying for about 30 minutes non-stop. To dare step into that place without serious prayer. Immediately you get to the pulpit, you feel arrows entering to your brain from the back. And by the time you look back, you see them setting on their windows. They're not hiding it. That's where we started. There is an expectation from this generation that is needed from you. When I left that church, I had 13 different delegations of people coming to beg me, come back, sir, come back, come back. Don't just, they begged and begged. One day, one of those delegations who used to come and beg me came to see me here. He came for deliverance. After he delivered, he said, I, I used to know this man in our former church. Let me say hello to him. So he came. Now says something. Said, Daniel, if you had listened to our begging that day, look at how many blood will be required from your head now. But he was one of those begging me not to go. I pray that you will manifest. In the name of Jesus. What are we trying to say here? We are saying that there are plenty of people who appears on earth, but they never showed up. They are here, but they never showed up. The real them never showed up. The one that is going about, the one that got married, the one that married, is a carcass of their correct image. So the Bible says, the endless expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The creature is still waiting for those who will begin to manifest. That is a lot of people, plenty of people, thousands listen to me tonight. There is an internal gold mine inside you. If it does not manifest, when you get to heaven, you will be accused of murder, of destruction. And you say, ah, I didn't kill anybody. I never aborted. Say yes. But those you are supposed to deliver, you did not deliver them because you did not manifest. If you need to pray the prayer to manifest for two weeks non-stop, it's worth it. Once you begin to dream and dream, you find that your dream, 
you are in beautiful places, you are in top position, but in real life you are suffering. It means that that is your correct self that has refused to manifest. I am praying for somebody here. Any power that does not want you to manifest, I bury them now. That amen is very weak. The amen is still very weak. Let it roll like thunder. When you manifest, eh, when you manifest, your gender will not matter. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Nobody will even consider your color again, whether you are black or white. When you manifest, when you manifest, no one cares about your background, your tribe, or your race. When you manifest. Say, and this world is very unfriendly to women. No. Once you manifest, you manifest. <laughs> That's it. The Yoruba say, a man sees a snake, a woman kills the snake. The important thing is for the snake to die. If it's a woman who is killing the snake, killing the snake all the time, whenever a snake appears, they will say, Madam, come or come or because she's the one who kills the snakes. If you say, Mr. Man, come and say, I don't come, Mr. Man, or you will run away. Divine manifestation must take root in your life. <laughs> when you manifest, the same people who used to mock you will be the first to honor you. Try as you may. When you manifest, and you begin to manifest the blessing of God, you cannot hide those blessings. It's not possible. Your blessing can get to a level where it's not possible to hide, no matter how you try. I have a word for somebody, I don't know who the person is. The Lord said you have been ordained to shine. And you must shine. In the name of Jesus. When you manifest, your life becomes a testimony. When you manifest, you'll be experiencing miracles that will be given back to other miracles. When you manifest, fellow human beings will think you're a spirit. You wonder, what kind of person is this? How did this happen? When you manifest, terrible things will begin to happen to those who are challenging God in your life. When you manifest, you become a pace setter. When you manifest, you stand out in progress and achievement. When you manifest, you become the delight of heaven. When you manifest, the hands of the enemy becomes too short to fight with you. When you manifest, you qualify as one of those in the Bible who refuse to die. Go like Shadrach, Daniel, Elijah, Enoch. They wanted to kill them, they refused to die. When you manifest, you become a reference point for amazing testimonies. No wonder the Bible laments here. So for the earnest expectation of the creature, waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. When you manifest, you become a film show in heaven. When you manifest, many men and women will want to serve your God. When you manifest, God will be mightily exalted in your life. When you manifest, association with you will cause people to be blessed when you manifest. When you manifest, your presence commands respect and honor. When you manifest, your words will matter in heaven and on earth. When you manifest, your name becomes a terror in the kingdom of darkness. When you manifest, people begin to quote your words. When you manifest, your name becomes a household name. When you manifest, you rewrite your family history. You rewrite it. You become a giant killer and a deliverer of your people. No wonder the Bible laments. For the endless expectation of the creature, wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. I pray for somebody here today, by fire and by force, 
divine manifestation must take root in your life. You must manifest. 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 In the name of Jesus. When you manifest, your life becomes a challenge to others. A man and woman try to copy what you are doing. When you manifest, there will be constant open heavens over your life. Men and women will compete to do you good. When you manifest, angels arise to defend you and protect you. You become a force to reckon with. And all the good things you lay your hands upon prospers. Because eventually you have shown up on earth. Unfortunately, many people are not what God really wants them to be. Some really have become what their parents want them to become. Some have become what they want to become. Some have become what their husbands want them to become. Some have become what their wives want them to become. But only a small percentage really become what heaven wants them to become. Only a few people can have this testimony written on their forehead that behold, he is going as it is written of him in heaven. He is going as it is written of him in the book of God. A lot of people are living the life of a shadow of what they really are. A man was having so much problem, he cried himself to sleep. He cried himself to sleep. Then he had a dream. The dream, he saw himself in heaven. And there was an angel by his side. And the angel was taking him around. Taking him around all over the place. All of a sudden, they saw one man coming. Looking happy, prosperous, contented. And looking glorious. And the man was coming towards him and smiling. So the man asked the angel, Who is this man? The angel said, That is the person you are supposed to be. But you are not who you are supposed to be. So when you wake up from this, your vision, pray to become what you really are. For God does not create failure. Every man is an image of God. God is the prototype from which all human beings are made. It's like they put God down on a table. And someone was looking at his image. I was making another thing like that. Since God is not a failure, and God is a God of manifestation, then you are supposed to manifest an answer to the reason you are created. That's why some people normally say that every man and woman was created by the Almighty to solve a problem. It will be a tragedy if you die and leave this place. And the problem the Almighty purposely created you to come and solve is left unsolved. And you die like that. And somebody comes to your graveyard and they begin to praise you. And be, oh, this person has lived a wonderful life. Wonderful life. Whereas the angels at the graveyard who have come to observe what you are doing, they are looking at all of you in disdain and they are hissing. What foolish people are these. This man never did one quarter of what he was supposed to do on earth. This man you are buried now. His internal Moses had been killed completely. And they cannot be found again. This is why fornication is very bad. Because if you are committing fornication, you are just segmenting your life. Little by little. You put small in a jigule. You drop some with a Chinese prostitute. Left a little bit with the housemaid in your house. Gave six or seven to the boyfriend and girlfriends who were having in school. Little by little, you were sharing yourself out. Fragmenting yourself. Fragmenting yourself. So when you are fully fragmented like that, and now you are going to pray, My father, I want to manifest. But you have, you have, you have shared them out. You don't need manifestation prayer in that instance. You need prayer to put together the broken pieces of your life. This is a very serious matter. There are prayers to pray here tonight. For those who are serious about the issues of destiny. For the creature was made subject to vanity, but not willingly. Creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly. 
There is something that is subjecting you, pushing him down. That's verse 20. So for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. That is, there is a power subjecting man. On, you are not willing to be subjected, but they are doing it by force. That's why I'm praying here tonight. Every power that is forcefully pushing your head down shall die tonight. Let your amen roar like fire. Let your amen roar like thunder. So God is a God of impact. God is a God of manifestation. Thirdly, God is a God of promotion. In Psalm 75, verse 6. Psalm 75, verse 6. Psalm 75, verse 6. For promotion comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red, and is full of mixture. Verse 6 again. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. What is promotion? Promotion is elevation. Promotion is advancement. Promotion is betterment. Promotion is improvement. God is a God of promotions. He said he lifted the beggar out of the dust. The poor out of the dungeon. He promoted them, promoted them, promoted them, promoted them to dine with the princes of the earth. God promoted Abraham in Genesis 12. Say, by you all nations of the earth shall be blessed. God promoted Joseph from an imprisoned slave to a prince. A prisoner became a prime minister. The promotion was so much that Potiphar, who jailed him, became his servant. Potiphar's wife, that told lies against him, became his servant. That's promotion. God promoted Moses from exile to a lawgiver. God promoted Aaron from slave to high priest. God promoted Saul from somebody who is a lunatic to the throne. God promoted Esther a house girl, a slave girl, and she became the queen. God promoted David from being a shepherd to the throne. God promoted Daniel from being a captive to a prime minister. God promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from being slave boys to rulers. Then that thief, by the right hand of Jesus, who said, Lord, remember me when you get to your kingdom. Jesus promoted him from that place to paradise. So God is a God of promotions. True divine promotion is any step that brings you closer or makes you alive at your divine position. True promotion is divine favor. True promotion is for you to be a step ahead of your adversary. True promotion is for you to be the head and never the tail. True promotion is for God to defy logic and history in order to move you forward. True promotion is for you to have favor with people you have done nothing to earn. True promotion is God moving you from depth to prosperity. True promotion is for doors to open to you that you don't even have the education or the skill to get. God is a God of promotion. And promotion is a covenant right of the children of God. And you as a covenant carrier, your Lord is to go from glory to glory. Not glory to story. Glory to glory. Yours is to go from strength to strength. I want you to understand it. That the God of promotion is able to do much more than you think or ask. It is God that can give you promotion that deviates from the normal. It is God that can give you promotion that 
people have never heard of it. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8, 1 Samuel 2 8, the Bible says this, in 1 Samuel 2 8, oh, I read it from verse 6, the Lord kill it and make it alive. He bring it down to the grave and bring it up. The Lord make it poor and make it rich. He bring it low and lift it up. He raise it up the poor out of the dust. He lifts up the beggar from the dungeon to set them among princes. To make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. God is a God of promotion. And you must key into his ability to move you forward. You must become his friend. You must become the friend of the Bible. You must become a friend of holiness. You must become a friend of humility. You must become a friend of prayer. Then you must listen to the principle of scripture which says, Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Say, so as many as ask, they shall receive. Tonight, we want to call on the God of impacts, the God of manifestation, and the God of promotion. If you are not expecting anything outstanding to happen in your life, you can keep quiet. But if you are expecting the God of impact, God of manifestation, God of glory, God of promotion to manifest, then speak with aggressive faith in your heart. Speak with the faith of the God who is able to create something for you if that thing is not available. Do you know that because of just one man, one man, heaven can kill a whole city because of one man. That's, that's the principle. Because of one man, heaven can also save a whole city. I want you to understand these principles. Jonah was in the boat. Jonah was the one who was disobeying God. But the presence of Jonah in that boat would have destroyed innocent lives who did nothing wrong. Because he wasn't doing what God wanted him to do. He did not want to manifest. Paul was in the boat with over 200 prisoners because of him. I said, okay, we are in this boat. No one shall die here. His presence there would serve all of them. The presence of Jonah in that one was going to destroy them. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. All eyes closed. If you are here tonight, you are not even born again. You have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. Don't waste time. You need to do that before you can pray these prayers. Close your eyes. Those who want to surrender your life to Jesus. And raise up your right hand. Say what I'm going to say after. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that short prayer with me, immediately we close. Find a way to the altar here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The prayers of tonight, they are prayers of people who are expecting something great to happen. Not, eh, we have been praying this kind of prayer before. No, no. When you call God His correct name, it begins to manifest. Can you shout this loud and clear? Please, don't let anybody's voice overshadow your voice. Already there is a massive presence of the angels of God here. Massive presence. Please, eh, nobody moves about now. If you are not an usher, stay where you are. I'm telling you now. Don't move about. There is massive presence of the angels of God here. They don't tolerate people just moving about anyhow. Stay where you are and pray. If you are not an usher, shout this loud and clear. My days of greatness. Begin by fire. In the name of Jesus. 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 
Masa Lika Rikana Riba Sapanda Kaya Boshen Teraba In Jesus name we pray. I have a word for somebody. I don't know who you are. The Lord said, It is the evil words of your stepmother that has kept you where you are now. The Lord said, As you pray those prayers, the curses of the stepmother upon your life has been broken. You will now mention your name. Daniel Olukoya. Hear the word of the Lord. Manifest in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Don't be afraid. That's why Jesus brought you here. We are here for a special encounter. Makate sete la kaya bo shende raba santa. Ribo sepande kaya bo shende raba. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Enough is enough. Makate sete la kaya bo shende. Ria polika tanda ka. Mana kantende rabo sepe. Aha! He's up, he's up, he's up. In Jesus' name we pray. I say, man, here. Your parents planted your placenta in the wrong place. It has been keeping you from manifesting. It is likely that the power of God that is going to strike you now, you might even somersault on your seat. doesn't matter. The important thing is for you to be set free tonight. Father, I pray right now that anyone in this meeting who is under placental bondage, let your power move upon them now. In the name of Jesus. As the first person. That's number two. That's number three. Aha. 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 Shout this with boiling anger. Every problem mocking me. Can you shout this loud? Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Don't keep quiet, don't keep quiet. Tonight is not a night to keep quiet. Jesus. Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Aha. problems in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Jesus.
Jesus name we will pray silence now beloved silence now mm. you the embargo of darkness upon this brother upon this sister so that any time he or she wants to move forward something mysterious goes wrong let the luggage of that embargo that you are unconsciously carrying on your head be broken now in the name of Jesus every evil hand laid on your star is catching fire now The power of resurrection is falling upon every dead virtue. Let all dead virtues here receive life, 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 in the name of Jesus. Yes. All the blessings of your ancestors that the devil has stolen from them, right there where you are tonight, recover them all. Recover 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 all. In the name of Jesus. And I'm prophesying for somebody here that before coming Sunday, uncommon riches shall look at you. In the name of Jesus. The kind of wealth that you have never come across shall look at you. In the name of Jesus. That's right. You have been paying your tithes in pennies. Your time, the time to pay your tithes in millions have come now. In the name of Jesus, let your evil rule like thunder. Now with boiling anger. When I say boiling anger, I mean boiling anger. You will now shout this prayer loud and clear. Say, every power tying down my life. Dead. In the name of Jesus. Name we pray. Sisters, what did I say? And brothers, this passage we have read handed over to man dominion. God gave dominion over the creation to man. Man therefore has creation as his domain. The totality of the creation amongst us is full of mysteries. And these mysteries are meant for our benefit. But if we are ignorant, it will work against us. 
we must seek to tap into the mysteries of creation and following the laid down rules of the Bible and get benefits from them. We are empowered to speak to creation. We are empowered to command creation. It's good for you to listen to me very carefully tonight. You may not find somebody trying to explain this to you very well again. When we talk about creation, the first place you turn to is the heavens. The immediate atmospheric heaven covering our head off. As far as it looks, as if it's so far away, is given to man for control. The Bible says the sun is to rule by day. The sun to rule by day, the moon to rule by night. Can you say that and let me hear you? So if a man wants to take charge of his life daily, daily, he must learn to take charge of the sun daily. According to what is written in Job chapter 38. It is your duty to speak to the sun as it is rising up. It is your reason to give counsel to that sun as it is rising up. It is your duty to speak to the day to command the morning as it is rising up. The moon comes out sometimes monthly. The moons come out monthly and the months are fashioned according to the circle of the moon. If a man wants to control the night, he must learn to take charge of the moon. To control the day, take charge of the sun. To control the night, take charge of the moon. The moon is the ruler over the night. That's why the psalmist says, The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. Can I hear somebody shouting that loud? Let the voice run like thunder. Therefore, to have great success in our warfare against Satan, night vigil is compulsion. This is because the kingdom of darkness operates better under the cover of darkness when men are least alert. The Bible says, this is your hour and the power of darkness. The hours of the night, there are terrible hours that the enemy operates. The Bible says, while men slept, his enemies came. 99% of the problem that manifests by day were programmed by night. Many of us, immediately we land on our bed, we sleep off. There are some people, when you land on your bed and you sleep off, that's when they wake up and start. Their most active hour is in the night when men are least alert. I'm praying for somebody here tonight that the problem that came into your life while you were sleeping should be buried now. Let your amen be loud and clear. Let your amen roar like thunder. So, night vigil takes the battle to the gates of the enemy. The stars also rule in the night. They are the compass of creation. Stars also represent lives. You find that in Matthew chapter 2 verse 2. Stars are symbolic. Apart from being used to get direction, the star gazers, the observer of times, they peep they peep into people's destinies and seek to control them through the stars. It is important for you and I to continue to soak our stars in the blood of Jesus and deliver it from the hand of the occultic men who want to substitute it or hijack it. We should speak unto our stars to reject any manipulation assigned against them. All those evil men who like to control people's life, they target their stars. But the Bible says something very interesting. It said, the stars, they have sweet influences. That's in Job 38. We can seek out the sweet influences of the stars and appropriate it into our lives. We do this by simply speaking to the stars by the power of the Holy Spirit to release their influences into our lives. So you can gain precious 
fruits from the sun. You can get precious things from the moon. You can get precious things from heaven. You can pray that the Lord should release his dew from heaven upon your head. These are very, very serious matters. And I want you to understand this very much. We can also demand that the sun, the moon, the stars should judge the enemies on our behalf. We can command the heavens to fight for us and fight to recover what has been stolen from us. So the first creation that we can speak to is the heavenlies. For the next few seconds now, I want you to put your two fingers to the heavenlies. And with a voice that nobody can overshadow here. The Bible talks about heavens over our head. The heavens over your head can either be open or closed. When the demons have closed the heavens over somebody's head, you can't get any good thing to happen. With your two hands stretched towards the heavens, and with anger boiling in your spirit, shout this loud and clear. Every dark program in the heavens against my destiny in the name of Jesus that's right deal with the dark program that's right open your mouth and declare it somebody here needs to shout this loud and clear don't keep quiet don't keep quiet this is not the time to keep quiet. Mata sata la kaya boshanda. Ribo la katanda. In Jesus name we pray. We have not finished. There was a king Uzziah in this Nigeria some time ago. That particular year we did palm of St. John's for two days. The power of this King Uzziah was hanging in the heavens. But after those two days, the powers were dismantled and the King Uzziah was removed with fire in your voice. You will say this loud and clear. Witchcraft powers hanging in the heavens against my life. Hear the word of the Lord. Die! In the name of Jesus. Something is happening here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. So much for the evolution. But that's not where we're going. That's not where we're going. There is still one more prayer to pray. Now your own personally. This is personal now. Pray for yourself personally. Say, I write my blessings. Can you say that loud and clear? In the heavens. By fire. In the name of Jesus. Oh, put your mouth and write it there. In Jesus' name we pray. I wish you could see the transactions taking place. The second creation to address is the waters. This is not where we are going tonight, but let me do a little bit of over syllabus. The waters. God gave us authority over the waters. With words, we control and rule the waters. There is abundance of the waters in the seas. The waters are meant to nourish the earth. So that the earth will yield unto us its fruit. The Bible says God made boundaries for the waters. We must act and release creation who are in the bondage of the water by prayer. We must act as servants of God 
and stop the waters from operating beyond the boundary God gave to them. And will give them the commandment of what God wants them to do. We as believers can command the gates of the waters to open. There are gates in the waters. According to Nahum chapter 2 verse 6. We can bind the strong man in the water. We can cut off every claim that Satan has over the waters. We can command the wind to blow upon the waters. These are through the words that God has planted into our spirit. So much for that. Now we now go to where we are going tonight. Help from the earth. Help from the earth. In Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. I read from verse 12. Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down to you having great wrath. Because he knew that he had but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. But something happened in verse 16. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth. And swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Help from the earth. The earth is the most humble entity on earth. You trample upon it, it does not talk. You urinate upon it, it does not complain. If you throw something to the skies, it will come flying back. At you. If you are not careful, it will eat your head. The earth is also a swallower. The earth is a living entity. The Bible says it has mouth here. The earth is a mysterious thing. All corpses from Adam to the present day are under the ground. The earth has swallowed them. All the feces, the latrines, the waste of men, they go into the ground. The earth is a bank and a recorder. The serpent pursued the woman. The woman developed, got eagle's wing to fly. The serpent now vomited a flood of water to drown the woman. But the earth helped the woman. The earth is always righteous and honest. The earth is very honest, very useful. What you give to it, it will give you back. Thus thou art the same, and not in the dust thou shalt return. All things are from the dust of the earth. All minerals are from the dust. Even what makes up man is from the dust. The only part of man that is not the dust is his spirit. One mystery about the earth that we don't use or we don't know is that the earth can be a helper. The earth can be a helper. That is a mystery known as mystery of help from the earth. There is no enemy you have it will pass the earth. There is nowhere on earth that a man's feet will not touch the ground. Therefore, as far as those enemies are still touching this ground, or they need the ground to operate, as children of the Most High, you and I can request and speak and obtain help from the earth. Don't let anybody believe you what the earth could do. I'm decreeing upon somebody here tonight that the earth will open up. 
and swallow your enemies. You shall swallow them. You shall swallow them. You shall swallow them. In the name of Jesus. We have to be conscious that our footprints, as far as the Bible is concerned, they are stamps of possession. The Bible tells us that we can seek to eat the good of the land. We can tap from the precious blessings of the earth. The earth has a mystery. The earth has ability to vomit and ability to bless. The earth has ability to swallow, to vomit and to bless. The earth will vomit those who do not hearken unto the voice of God and bless those who hearken to the voice of God. The earth is always linked up with harvest time. So you can insist on the earth that you want a bountiful harvest. Help from the earth. We are going to pray some very strange prayers here tonight. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they stood up against Moses. And Moses prayed. And said, look at these men. And the Lord said, don't worry. I'll deal with them. And God said, Moses, how do I deal with these men? Moses said, Lord, don't let them die ordinarily. Let something extraordinary happen. Let the ground open and swallow them up. And right there in the presence of anyone, everyone, the earth heard, opened up, selected those who wanted to swallow, swallow them, and close back. The earth can help. The earth can bless. The earth can swallow. The earth can vomit. I taught biology for many years in the secondary school. And the first lecture in biology we teach to our students is living things and non-living things. Science does not categorize the earth as a living organism. In fact, as far as science is concerned, it's non-living. But the scripture recognizes the land as a living and intelligent organism and it and the scripture addresses it accordingly. The scripture declares that the earth is not a non-living thing. It is living. In biology they say living things reproduce. The earth can reproduce. Biology says living things have mouth. The earth has mouth. It's capable of opening up and swallowing. It's also capable of vomiting. The earth has feelings and can be thirsty. The earth can drink water just like human beings drink water. By implication, the earth has belly, it has stomach. There are things hidden in the belly of the head, treasures of darkness that belong to so many people that they can't have access to unless they pray. The Bible says the earth can hear. The Bible says the earth can speak. The Bible says the earth can decide to be silent. The Bible says the earth can write in Jeremiah 22. Then if the earth can write, it means that the earth is literate and intelligent. The earth has emotions. The earth can fear, it can mourn, it can rejoice. The earth is also capable of being defiled. The earth is capable of being cleansed. Sometimes the earth has need to rest. Sometimes the earth can enter into agreement with God or with man. Sometimes the earth can be called as a witness. Sometimes the earth can be sued or silenced. Sometimes as you read your Bible, you find that the earth can form an alliance in the dispute. The earth can wage war. The earth can devour men. The earth is capable of being sick. The Bible says, I will heal the land. The, the land can be sick. The earth from where man came for, therefore has living characteristics. All life is not the same. Plant life is different from animal life. Human life is different from insect life. Natural life is different from spiritual life. Human life is different from angels or demons life. All life is life, but not all life is the same. So the earth has life, but life of its own. This is a serious matter. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
verse 37. First Corinthians 15, verse 37. There are some strange prayers we need to pray here tonight. But the strange prayers will bring strange testimonies. First Corinthians 15, 37. And that which thou sowest. Thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And unto every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. There is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon. And another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So all life is life, but all life is not the same. The earth has life, but its life is the life of its own. What I've just tried to explain to you briefly now. Satanic agents understand this deep truth more than Christians. Therefore, men have worshipped the earth for ages. Men have poured libations on the earth for ages. If libations have been poured on your land, then that land is in bondage. Every land recognizes its Lord. And the whole creation knows that the earth is the Lord. Ignorance on our part brings destruction. As you are sitting down there tonight, you might be waging war against the spirits from the earth or the spirits from the grave. If you do not exercise your right as a believer, the sinner man will exercise his own right. We need to rule our area. Through prayers, we must grant God access to rule our domain. If we don't, sinners and devils will do so. Hearing lies the great truth where I am going to start bringing out one by one now. Number one, you can address your life by speaking unto the day you were born. You can address your life by speaking unto the day you were born. You can address your life by speaking unto the day you got married. You can address your life by speaking to the day you graduated. You can address your life by speaking to the day you were baptized. You can address your life by speaking to the day you gave birth. You speak to that day and the day will listen to you. You can address your life by speaking to the day a business is inaugurated. That day is the beginning of the life of that business. You can address your life by speaking to that day. Why? Because every creation understands and obeys words from man when it is inspired by God. Two, we must speak positive and righteous words into creation. Speak it to them. Three, we must declare judgment where necessary. We must declare judgment where necessary. Either though, before now, creation has been obeying the voice of witchcraft, the voice of sorcery, the voice of incantation, the voice of divination, the voice of invocation. But when the perfect voice, our voice appears, all those imperfect voices will be ignored by creation. But if we keep quiet, the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the seas, they are all neutral bodies. So if they program it and you did nothing, it works against you. This is a tragedy. Serious tragedy. One great tragedy of the Christian life is that many of us don't wake up on time to pray. While we are sleeping, 
people of other religions are, that woken up earlier and they started speaking enchantment into the sky. They are spoken to the day, taking control of the day before you wake up. And so many of us wonder why are they going to the top? Why are they going to the top? It's because they wake up early, they speak to the moon, they speak to the sun, they speak to the stars, while most of us are snoring on our beds. One great tragedy of this current generation of Christians is that we are very lazy. Very, very lazy. Lazy pastors, lazy ministers, lazy choristers, lazy ushers, lazy Sunday school teachers. A very lazy generation. Not ready to sweat in prayers. Not ready to pray until something happens. This is very sad. And because of that, we're losing so many benefits. Words we have to speak, we're not speaking the words. What we should command, we're not commanding. What we should speak to, we're not speaking to them. And we are becoming gradual slaves. Unless we wake up quickly and take charge. If you don't take charge, the enemy will take charge. They understand this things that I'm telling you. It's most of us who don't understand. That's why our forefathers, they were worshipping the earth. And this morning, they will call on the earth. If they want to report somebody, they report the person to the earth. We should speak words to control this ordinance. To speak for solution. We should release blessings. We should speak unto thrones, evil thrones. We should speak into the marketplace. I know a woman who came here many years ago when we taught something like this. She was an illiterate, but she understood the message. She used to cook in a primary school. About 14 caterers go to that large school to cook. Every day, they will cook rice and take to school. Nobody will buy the rice. The students will just not come to where she is. They will go to the other caterers. So every day she is bringing back rice home without sell. No sale. She will bring the rice home. And every day, the children were eating rice. Until one day, the children said, Mama, don't, is there no other food? Why are we eating rice every day here? And the mama said, if you don't eat it, it will be wasted. So they have to be cooking fresh on every morning. Until she came and learned the principle that she could speak into the market. She could speak onto the ground. She could speak onto the basin she used to cook. She could speak onto her spoons, onto her plates. She learned this principle. And she woke up early that morning. When she began to cook rice, she spoke to the evilies. I said, oh, I must hear the word of the Lord. I program my profit unto you. I must prosper. What I'm saying now, I fasten it to the evilies. With the nail soaked in the blood of Jesus. Until I finish selling my rice. Nobody says in that school anymore. Spoke. Used our authority. I went to that school. That day. <laughs> Within 10 minutes, she was through. 10 minutes, she had finished selling. Nobody knew brought the students there. She had spoken. She did not know that all those other Ketras tools, they have powers they were using. She has superior power which she refused to use. Many of us have been cheated. Some have lost promotion. Just sack you anyhow. They take, took your money anyhow. You have words you can speak, you refuse to speak them. Where do we go from there? You say you are selling the market. You didn't speak to the market. That's why you are not selling. You complete that you are broke. You know where to speak to. To bring wealth into your bosom, you refuse to speak. You have to speak unto the marketplace. You speak unto the house where you are living. Speak unto that house. Some time ago we did something like this here too. And that house is not far from here. Six flats, six tenants. Sorry, six flats, five tenants, the landlord was living in one flat. One person comes to Mountain of Fire. Four others were lecturers in the university. All of them, they brought cars to that house. One by one, they lost their cars. Well, after that is the end of the tragedy. Then, from one flat to the other, if one child does not die, one child will be sick. If one child is not sick, somebody will have an accident. Th terrible things began to happen to the tenants. And it was as if all of them were inside a maze of 
manipulation. They did not understand what was happening. Until there was a teaching like this. And for the first time, it's as if somebody opened the understanding of the brother who was coming here. He now called the four other tenants and said, wait a minute, look here. Only this landlord is doing naming ceremony, is buying new cars, is doing things that people are rejoicing. No, no other person here is rejoicing or celebrating anything. That beloved, something is wrong here. Let us start praying. Those four lecturers were, st- were Christians too. They look at the brother. Then, nah, 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 nah. That's a wicked superstition. So the brother alone began to pray. He was in prayer one day when he heard the voice of the Lord. He said, son, go to the well in your company. I have something to show you. And he went to the well. And he said, son, Take a bucket. Fetch water out of this well. Put in the bucket. Brought it out. He noticed that something was making crank, crank, crank inside the bucket. By the time we look, a big tortoise was in the bucket. Around that tortoise was tied this Islamic phylactery. And the names of all the tenants were scribbled on those things. The enemy had caged all their virtues. Can you raise up your right hand to the heavens and declare this louder than anyone around? Environmental witchcraft. Program to drink the blood of my prosperity. Is that the loudest you can shout it? In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray rise up on your feet now all eyes closed rise up on your feet if you are here tonight and you are not born again you have not just surrendered the life to Jesus wherever you are why all eyes are closed just raise up your right hand and say what I am going to say now after me say father in the name of Jesus I come before you now Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Who said I shall pray with me? Immediately we close. Let's find a way to the altar here. Time has come for us to start those prayers. They may sound strange. It may appear as if you've not prayed them before. But I want to beg you. And I want to appeal to you. Not to consider the strangeness of the prayers, but pray them mercilessly and violently. Immediately we start praying these prayers. A lot of things will begin to happen here. Some of those things will result in awesome testimonies. The serpent pursued the woman. The woman got wings to fly. But the wings was of no use now. Although they were eagle wings. The serpent vomited a flood of water to drown the woman. And the waters will have drowned the woman and her child. The Bible says, but the head helped the woman. The head helped the woman. There can be help from the head for you if you speak unto it. And when you begin to speak unto it, except that enemy does not work on this ground. Except it doesn't eat what is coming from the ground. Except it doesn't live in a house built from the earth. That's where they can escape the arrows of the earth. Get yourself ready now. Can you shout this loud and clear? Don't let anybody's voice overshadow your voice. By the power! In the blood of Jesus! That's the prayer. Can I hear the sister shouting this loud and clear? <laughs> Sisters, please can you shout it loud and clear? <laughs> Brothers, let your voice roar like thunder. 
Something is happening already. That's right. Everybody together now. In the name of Jesus. Masakatenda Kayaba. Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes. Receive. Receive. Help. Help. Name we pray. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I want to congratulate somebody over there. That's right. Oh yes, as a benefit, they've denied you for 13 years. But as you open your mouth there, they rush it to you. Say, Kora, Detan, Abiram, Kora, Detan, Abiram, Kora, Detan, Abiram, of my father's house. Can I hear you shouting out? Be swallowed. By the earth. Uh-huh. Can I hear you shouting it again? In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Jesus. Jesus. name we pray. This next prayer will go to any geographical location where they are divining evil against you. Arrows from the earth! Arrows! Pursue my pursue! In the name of Jesus! Arrows from the earth! Center. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. As you pray this next prayer, if you are in this meeting tonight, you normally feel as if somebody is pouring sand on you. But you cannot see the sand physically. Find a way to the altar and be on your knees. You, can't, you don't see any sand, but what, you know is they are, what they are pouring on you is like sand. 
Those of you at the front here, if you are not ready to pray like thunder and fire, go back to your seat home, because you will need that strong prayer to set you free. Because it means that the enemy is trying to bury you alive using the instrument of the earth. It means that somebody has been using the sand of the earth against you. So everybody will pray like fire and like thunder. You at the front, pray the way you've never prayed before. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. My virtues inside the earth come out now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. We are not here to joke. We are here for serious business. Continue, continue, continue. The power of God in the name of Jesus. Move. The power of God in the name of Jesus. Move. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Aha. Uh -huh. Let there be divine surgery to pick out from everyone any plantation of the sand. Just be delivered. 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 In the name of Jesus. Father, let the power and the blood of Jesus cause great deliverance to happen to your people here tonight. Now you don't pray a second part like this. Arrows of the sand fired against me. Backfire in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Wherever you are now, I don't know how you are going to do it. Lay your right hand on the earth. On the earth. Everybody, let lay that hand on the earth. Right hand. I would declare like this. Declare it violently. So, oh, hey! Hear the word of the Lord. For me, it's my blessings. In the name of Jesus. Masekatenda Kaya Moshenda. Yes. Yes. Oh, heart. Hear the word of the Lord. For me is my blessing. For me, them. 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 Masekate la kaya bo shendera ba. Bakato la kato ra bo sopo. Riabo li katanda. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Aha. You can stand up now. Thank you, Jesus. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are plenty of transactions taking place here tonight. In those days, Moses took dust and blew into the dust. And the dust became boils on the bodies of the magicians. This is the next prayer I want you to pray. You want to use the weapon of the earth against any magic power assigned against you. Let your voice roar like thunder as you pray this particular prayer. As you pray this particular prayer. Bullets from the earth. Locate my enemies. Can I hear you roaring like thunder? Let your voice roar like fire. In the name of Jesus. Fire the bullets from the earth. Jesus name we pray Jesus now prophetically shake that head shake it shake it see what's happening now let that head go let that head go remove your wicked hand from that head Remove it. Remove it. Remove it. Remove it. Something is happening. That's right. Every stubborn high blood pressure. Spirit of stroke and paralysis. Lose your hold now. Jesus. Amen. Stretch your two hands forward. Father, the odd calls of fire that you place on the palm of Isaiah, on the tongue of Isaiah, lay it upon these hands now. So that the demolishing power of that coal of fire would demolish every power of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Now grab your head with your two hands now. The more you love yourself, the louder your voice shall be. You will raise up your voices and don't neg- this is not a day to negotiate. My head Hear the word of the Lord. Arise and shout in the name. This is not a day to negotiate. Jesus. 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 Yes. Open your mouth and cry loud and clear. My head. Hear the word of the Lord. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Jesus.
Jesus name we pray thank you Jesus Father we thank you for tonight and we thank you for your grace and for your power accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Tonight, lay your hands upon us. Open our understanding. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Turn to somebody and shout at the person like this. I move from deficit to recovery by the power in the blood of Jesus. Can you shout it at the person? Amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. From deficits to recovery. We began to look at this and pray about it last week. Today we are reading from First Samuel. Chapter 30, verse 8. First Samuel, chapter 30, verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. I prophesy upon the life of somebody here, everything the enemy has stolen from you from your mother's womb till now, recover all. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray one prayer now. If you want to key into it, make sure that your tenfold amen is the loudest here. I decree upon someone here that everything your ancestors have lost, anything that belongs to you that has been lost, or that has been unconsciously stolen, you did not even know it belongs to you, recover them by fire in the name of Jesus. David lost something. He had it before, but he lost it now. He had to pursue, overtake, and recover. Last week, I began to explain to you that promotions do not necessarily come to the best person. And I explained to you that life is not fair. There is no book where they wrote that life will be fair. So it's you who will determine that life has to be fair to you. A lot of people have lost so many things. Some have partially recovered. Some have fully recovered. But we need to recover all that the enemy has stolen. Some are rejoicing on partial recovery. It means you have a recovery. But there is a sign left behind that says, once upon a time, you lost something. If you had a wound, and the wound got healed, and left a scar, big scar behind, that is partial recovery. For example, in the case of Samson, it was partial recovery. He recovered his strength, but he never recovered the eyes that he lost. He had air on his head before. It was cut off. Then the air began to grow. But before it began to grow again, his eyes had been plugged out. So even though the air began to grow again, his blindness remained. But when we talk about total recovery, recovering all, 
We're talking about recovery in such a manner as if you have never lost anything. Job recovered all. Naaman the leper recovered all. That widow recovered a dead son. Anna recovered all. Lazarus recovered. That madman at Gadarens recovered. That sick man that was at the pool for 38 years recovered. The woman with the issue of blood recovered. All these people that I've mentioned, as God restored them, He will restore you in the name of Jesus. Something has been stolen from you. You are deprived of something. You need to recover them. Maybe it's physical, material, social, spiritual, financial, morally, freedom. You need to recover them. Maybe your health. Maybe your life. Maybe your joy. Maybe wasted years. Maybe your parts in life. It may even be your damaged soul. The soul has been damaged. You need to recover them. Listen. No matter how you were born. No matter how long you have possessed something. No matter how cocksure you are that certain things are super glued to your hand. No matter how strong you are. No matter how glorious your destiny. No matter how wealthy you are. There is a possibility that you can lose it. And a lot of people have lost so many things like that. There are agents whose duty it is to steal, to rob, to run a man into deficit. Number one, we call them problem expanders. A small thing like this, they now begin to expand it, expand it, expand it. Before you know it, it has become big. Started with a pimple on the face, then they begin to expand it. They begin to expand it. They became something else. And became big. It could be a small swelling on the breast. They begin to expand. Expand it. Expand it. Until it becomes something really big. Something really, really big. This is why I want you to raise up your right hand. And pray with boiling anger. Anger. I say anger. Let holy anger well up within you as we shout this loud and clear. Pass! Expanding my problems. Your time is up. Down. In the name of Jesus. This is not a time to keep quiet. This is not a time to negotiate. The time for negotiation is not now. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Aha! See what is happening! Then we pray. Amen. It started as a small fight. This pastor was leaving the house. And the wife said, put down money. He said, no money. Arguments. Shouting. 
shouting on the woman. He said, I'm going to church. The woman said, you're going to church? Said, that place you are going. Because of the shouting you shouted now, you are coming back with disgrace. But I said, shut up. It was a small fight. Husband, wife. The man now got to church. They put a case to him. A demonic man. And they asked him to pray. He laid his hands on the head of this demonic man. He started praying. All of a sudden, he found that the air of his own head was falling down. What is this? So he tried to use his arm to brush his head. More air fell down. And by the time he would go a little bit further again, he had gone almost bald. Quickly, he dispatched the person he was praying for and started praying for himself. He started little in the house. And by the time it happened now, his hair had gone. He never recovered that hair till he died. Small problem. So, powers have to expand problems. They are enemies of recovery. I'm praying for somebody here. Any power trying to prolong your journey in the desert, I bury that power now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The second anti recovery power, a very strong one indeed, is Star Ijaka. Star Ijaka. Everyone has a star. You have a star. That your star is what God has planted in you to cause you to be celebrated. That your star is something in you that men bow for. That your star is something everyone puts in you to make you shine. But the star hijackers, who can see it, they can arrest it. Those wise men, they said, Where is he, born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east, and we have come to worship it. That was the star of Jesus. Some people were spiritually strong enough to see it. So if they could locate and see the star of Jesus, your own, that you are still praying and sleeping while you are praying. It's so easy to see. They don't need a microscope. And once they deal with that star, they, it will not kill you, but they deaden your destiny and make your destiny to be stammering when you should be talking straight. When MFM was in Old Yaba Road, there used to be a man who comes for our services. He got born again from occultism. He brought all his occultic books to be burnt. There's about three bags. All those books were. Burned them. And he was always very happy. In the meeting, he's always very happy. Jumping up and clapping and rejoicing. But that was a service day. Just sat down. Downcasted. Unhappy. Not singing. So I went to him. Sir, what's wrong? They are not your normal shuffle step today. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, today, as I was coming from Lagos, I saw a boy sleeping under the bridge. I said, he remembered that when he was still in the world of darkness, and they were doing the naming ceremony of this boy, that himself and one of his occultic friends were invited to the naming ceremony, and they saw seven stars on the head of that baby. But he took three. His friend took four. That's, so what is making him unhappy now is to see that boy sleeping under the bridge simply because we have taken his stars. I want you to raise up your right hand and shout this loud and clear. Don't say it doesn't concern me. My star! Are you doing in the valley 
of witchcraft. Can you shout it loud?